Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for Mystic Fitness Yoga, uh, 9 a.m. on the weekends and 8 a.m. during the week. We have uh, some amazing upcoming events uh, that are pop-up classes that we're trying to uh, get done out here uh, before it gets too cold. So please, please check out our website and um, and come to uh, our Sunday night series. Uh, we've got Reiki yoga this tonight, um, and we've got rocking vinyasa tomorrow with Amy. And uh, we have a um, kind of like a mindfulness grounding resourcing type of class that I'm doing that I'm doing on um, the 20th. It's also on Sunday night. So just check out the website and keep up on what's coming up. I'll um, have you come into a comfortable place on your mats. Mm, begin to settle into the earth. And take a deep in breath together. And sigh it out. One more time. Allow your bodies to become aware of the magnetic force that is coming from the ground, from the earth. Our earth mother, Gaia, Gaia. There is a magnetic force. It's very subtle. And in order to tap into it, you need to slow down. So slow down, slow down so much. Slow the breath, soften. The sits bones, soften the shoulders. It's been written about as the Schumann re resonance, where the actual heartbeat of the earth has been measured. And when we align ourselves with this resonance, we can feel that deep inner peace. Slow yourself down so much to a point of almost melting in the areas that are in contact with the ground. Down, down, down. And feel into your belly and your chest. And soften. Soften your shoulders and your hands. Your legs. Open. And notice how when you do this, the breath starts to have more space. And all the while, you are tapping into the magnetic force. Right there at the earth center, deep, deep 
within the dark, rich soil. Become so attuned to this resonance. All of nature is attuned to you. Take a deep in breath together. And sigh it out. One more time. And now as you maintain this kind of attunement, Begin to move and move from a deep connection with your deepest source right there at like the belly button area and kind of awareness of softening that area and just starting to kind of move while your antennas and your ears and your Every cell of your being is still open to the sounds surrounding you. Movement starts to come from a just deeper place. At one point you will And kind of start to make your way over to a seated position. And you can take your time getting there. Maybe you roll over onto your side for a few moments. Maybe you rock and roll up and down. You'll get there. Once you're there, just set, set yourself up by rubbing the hands together and planting the hands on the heart. And going deep within and also going outwards into space, so high up into the galaxies. This inner and outer openness We bow to this moment that has brought us together. We bow to every breath, every heartbeat. We open with the sound of Om. First, a cleansing breath together. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. your time to slowly make your way into some movements around the wrist. So stretch your arms outwards, circle your wrists around, 
rotational motions towards the right a few times, and then rotational motions towards the left a few times. Reach your arms overhead, maybe look up for a moment. Inhale, and on the exhale, bring the palms towards the heart space, feeling that long line of energy towards the midline. And make your way into a table pose. And as you get there, settle yourself, stacking your joints. Maybe curl the toes under and start to shift your weight back and forth a few times. Stretching the feet as well. And at some point as you return to the center, take your time to separate the knees a little bit wider. Rock your tailbone side to side, getting into the inner hips a little bit. And then shift your weight so that your left shoulder is on top of your left wrist and open up towards the right, feeling a twist right from the mid back. And circle the right arm around a few times. This might mean you bend the arm so that your circular motion isn't as intense around the shoulders. And then draw that right arm forward, extend it forward, thumb facing up with the in-breath. On the out-breath, pull the elbow towards the rib, and then extend it forward again with the in-breath, and circle it all the way up, and thread it through. Let's do it again. Inhale, open up first. Exhale, bring it forward. Inhale, elbow towards the ribs. Forward and up. And then twist. Let's do this two more times. Inhale, open. Exhale, forward. In, elbow goes back, forward, opens back up, and threads. Last time, open in, out, forward, in, forward, open, and thread, and rest for a few moments and take any motions that are necessary for your body to feel at peace. Maybe there are some variations here. Maybe you just settle yourself on the ground and just feel the peace from that magnetic resonance once again. Back to the center, plant your right hand under your right shoulder and arch and curl just a couple of times. And take any motions within the arches and the curls. And prepare to take it to the other side. As you plant the right hand down under the right shoulder, open through the left. And maybe some small circular motions throughout that left arm, depending on what's going on here for you with your shoulder. And eventually reach that arm all the way up with the in-breath. Out-breath, it goes forward. And towards the rib cage, forward and up. Out, thread it through. Let's do it again. Active right hand into the ground as you open through the heart. Out, forward. In, back, forward, and twist. Out, thread. 
two more. Last time. and rest and breathe. Beautiful. Slowly come back to the center. Set up your knees under your hips. Take some arches and curls again. Let the neck now, as you curl, kind of rock side to side. And slowly start to make your way into a downward facing dog. This might mean, and the reason I said make your way, this might mean that you end up first stretching each leg back at a time and taking your time to get to downward facing dog. Once you arrive, your body will guide you into some movements. Into some pedaling, into some rocking side to side. As you make your way into a forward fold, your hands can either walk to your feet or your feet can walk to your hands or you can meet in the middle. Let the knees bend plenty so that you feel supported in the upper body. Feel the ground under your feet and start to leverage now the magnetic power of the earth through your feet. Literally imagine that your feet are magnets pulling from the earth. And I invite you to Rise up, but when you rise up, take it in a way that feels really supportive for your lower back. This means for me to activate the heels into the ground, stretch the mat apart slightly, and as I roll up, there's activity through the feet, through the legs, that allows the support for the lower back. Arriving there, Make your way into some motions of the arms all the way up with an in-breath. On the out-breath, the palms come to heart space and rest right at the heart center. One more time, do that again. Feel as if you're gathering the space around you energetically, taking it all the way up, maybe looking up and then drawing that line of energy, that line of sovereignty, sovereignty, right there at your heart space. One more time together. As you become reconnected to the ground with your feet, take a deep in breath, reach arms overhead. On the out breath, we will bow this time, bringing the hands to heart space and then bowing with the knees bent, forward fold. In for a half lift. 
I'll plant the palms and step back, coming into a plank pose. As you actively press the floor away with the elbows bent so that you're supporting your joints, press the floor away, pull the navel in and up, and squeeze your glutes muscles and your quads. Stay here enough so that you start feeling a little bit of shaking at the arms. That is intentional. Yes. Are you feeling the shake yet? Okay, good. So once we feel that, lower the knees down, draw the chest forward, inhale. On the exhale, take a few push-ups up and down. Your elbows should point directly back. Let your body feel its own strength from that core center. The more shaking, the better. Two more. And lower all the way down to find your baby cobra. And set it up nice and slow. There's no rush to get into it. Activate the legs into the ground. Feel the long line of energy from the heels all the way up through the crown of the head. And then draw those elbows back more so that you can feel the activation of your upper back, the shoulder blades muscles. Feel your own strength while at the same time you are in this meditative state. And I know that it sounds counter like one is counter the other, and that's not true. You can be in a deep meditation while building strength. Plant your hands down on the ground. Press yourself back up. If you'd like to take a break in child pose for a moment, do that before coming into downward facing dog. You'll eventually make your way into a forward fold. Again, either walking your hands to your feet or walking your feet to your hands or meeting in the middle. Either walking or floating. And rise up, leveraging the magnetic force under your feet. Breathing in, breathing out, palms to heart space as you bow again, forward fold. Half lift, in breath. Out breath, plant palms, step back. Strong active plank. Wait till you feel the shake. Press the floor away, micro bend through the elbow, squeeze your thighs and glutes muscles. Keep the crown of the head drawing forward, your gaze is down. Take it in. On the out, either lower down to Shataranga Dandasana with the knees lifted off the ground, or take a few push-ups with the knees down or up before going into upward dog or baby cobra. Deep in breath. Out breath. Press yourself through to downward dog. Take that deep in breath together. Sigh it out. Right leg rises to the sky with the in breath. The out breath, the knee comes to the chest as you curl. And lengthen it back. Out knee to chest, step forward to the right thumb, hover in your runner lunge. Draw those arms back, breathe it in and out. Deep breath in together, out together. See if you can activate both feet into the ground and then imagine that you're stretching your mat apart. Take care that your feet are in fact hip distance and place your right elbow or right hand on your right thigh. Now take the left arm forward like we did in table earlier, inhale. 
On the exhale, draw the elbow towards the rib. Inhale forward and come into a twist to the opposite side. In and out, thread it through so that the arm goes under the thigh. Inhale, open to the side again. This is a balance challenge in case you haven't noticed. Go forward with the in-breath, elbow towards the ribs. Forward again, open up. Yes, a balance challenge. Find your way into the hip distance, like you're standing on railroad tracks versus a thin rope. Open up again, let's do it one more time. In, out, forward, in, elbow to ribs. Forward, open, and thread. Good job. Now take yourself up a little higher and take your left wrist up and over the right thigh. And now twist to the opposite side. And either your hand stays on your sacrum or it opens up. Maybe the back knee drops down because it feels better on your body. You decide. Take it in together. On the out, bring your hands to your hips. Dial the back heel down. Open it up to your warrior two. Make fists with your hands to circle your wrists around. Feel your body getting stronger with this slow motion, the slow movements that we're doing today, deep, strong postures. Invite that expression of the arms apart, thumbs facing up, breath in, squeeze into your shoulder blades, tuck that tailbone under slightly. And then come into a side angle lunge. Right arm towards right thigh, open up. And take any motions you wish through that left arm. As you come back into warrior two, take a deep in breath and reverse your warrior. On the out breath, cartwheel hands down, fine runner lunge. And allow the back knee to drop to find an extension through the right leg for a half split. Toes towards shins, heel is digging into the ground while the other knee is opposite from it, pressing back. Now we're gonna do something kind of a balance and strengthening as you replant your right foot into the earth, maybe position it under your knee. Coming back into a runner lunge, feel your right heel really firm and come into a standing split. Left leg lifts slightly. And from here, we're gonna eventually come to stand, balancing on the right leg. Right heel is digging down. You'll bend the right knee. Left knee comes to the chest. Hands come to the heart. Feel that inner line center of gravity as you rise up. Pull everything towards the midline. Balancing on your right leg. Left knee towards the chest. Feel the shaking in the right leg. Relax your shoulders, grow taller. Deep in breath. On the out breath, cross the ankle up and over. Either stay here, still feeling the activity in the right heel, or going back and forth. It's a squat on one leg, back and forth. We're gonna do that five more, you guys. Four, five, six, seven, eight, 
four, three. The more burn, the better. That means you're getting stronger. Two. And one. Hold down. Relax shoulders. Hug in towards the center. Activate ankle against leg. Ankle against leg. Leg against ankle. And then come back to stand. Shake up through the right leg and flow back to downward dog. However you get there is great. Take your own version of the transitional flow. Left leg rises up to the sky. Inhale. Exhale, knee to the chest. Curl. Lengthen back. In. Out, knee to chest. Step foot to left thumb. Hover in your runner lunge. Take that hover. Draw length through the crown of the head. Shoulders are relaxed. Arms are extended back. Feel the activity in the left heel. Take care of your feet or hip distance. Remember what happened before. If they're not hip distance, when we twist to the opposite side, it's going to get a little harder to balance. Take your left elbow onto your left thigh and take your time to extend the right arm forward. Inhale. On the exhale, elbow to the rib. Open it forward, in, to the side, out, thread. You have to stay super active in that left heel. Forward again, in. Elbow back, forward and open. And thread. Take a twist first. Arm goes forward. Inhale, elbow back, arm forward, arm opens, and thread. You guys are doing much better on this side because we all know it and there's muscle memory. Inhale again. Woo, I'm not though. Exhale, forward, in back, forward, open, and thread. Good job. Now, as you rise up, take the twist, right wrist over top of left thigh, feel the twist happening from the mid back, activate your left thigh against your arm and vice versa, maybe back knee drops if it feels better, maybe left arm opens if it feels better. Beautiful. Good, as you return back to the center, dial back heel down, open it to your warrior two. Squeeze those upper shoulder blades towards one another. Feel the lower, the lower parts of the shoulder blades too, squeezing in towards the spine and come into a side angle lunge. Tuck the tailbone under in your side angle lunge. And see if you can make your way into this place where it feels like you're really stacking your joints a little bit more. Upper right ribs on top of left. Right hip on top of left as much as possible. Maybe the upper arm makes some motions, maybe it doesn't. As you return back into warrior two, inhale, maybe making fists with hands as you circle. 
Reverse your warrior. Come back to center. Cartwheel hands down. Find a runner lunge. And drop your back knee for a half split. Notice how in the half split, I allow my body to kind of make some motions of rocking the hips side to side. I also dig the left heel into the ground so that I can find some strong engagement of muscles around the knee. Rotational motions through the neck can be really helpful. Since everything is connected, fascia, long line of energy. And preparing to come into that standing split, now that we've given the left leg a break, shift your weight into the left leg after coming into a runner lunge. Keep your left heel digging down into the ground, lifting the right leg up. Deep in breath together. On the out breath, start to get ready to drop into like a one-legged chair, bending the left knee, feeling your balance, finding that deep core line of energy. As the palms come together and you rise, you're zipping everything in towards the midline. Rising strong. Feeling your breath, feeling your strength. Feeling your shoulders relax. Cross the right ankle over top. You might stay here. This might be plenty. Or you might take those squats down and up. Challenging those muscles on the right, on the left leg again. Feeling the shaking, feeling the burn, knowing this means you're getting stronger. And becoming acquainted with discomfort for a higher purpose. <laughs> Activate that ankle against the leg. Good job. And relax the right leg down. Shake up. Wonderful. Let's take our way into a wide-legged stance. Um, before you do that, I want to show it to you. Take a quick look at me. So... What I'm doing is I'm going to bend my right knee, bring my right hip towards this side, bring the right elbow on this side, open up into a twist, either stay here or bring my right hand down, fingertips to the ground, and then shift to the other side, doing the same thing into a twist. And when I come to the other side, there's also the opportunity to release the left hand down, or also taking it even deeper into a deeper twist. And you could do that on both sides. These are your options. Let's do it again. If you want to find the wide edge of the mat, activate feet into the ground. Bow forward, find a wide legged forward fold. If you notice that all your weight is on the like block on the ground. Take a twist. Inhale. On the exhale, take it to the other side. Bend the left knee. Elbow on the thigh. Nelly, make sure your knee stays on top of your ankle. Good. So left elbow on the thigh. Left elbow on the thigh. Twisting to the right. Yes. Maybe fingertips on the ground or a deeper, deeper twist by grabbing the opposite leg. Let's do it again to the right. I'm doing it with you if you want to take a look.
and to the left. One more time on each side. Nice. Now find a wide-legged fold and relax into it. Making whatever motions are feeling good for you. Now we're going to start to alternate between drawing the heels to the midline, sinking down almost like in a full squat, and then drawing the heels back again and going down into a forward fold. Shaking the head no and yes. So like this and like that. Kind of like heels in and then heels back. I'm just alternating a couple of times. Finally, as you draw the heels in, come up into goddess, lifting yourself up, and maybe adjusting the placement of your feet depending on where you are. And those hips should feel pretty good at this point. And any variations of the arms. For some reason right now, it feels good for me to Interlace hands behind the back and open the heart. And then curling and drawing the arms forward a few times in goddess. Good job. Let's find your way onto the ground into a seated position. And once you get there, take your feet forward. Your knees are bent. And then draw the feet back so that the heels are under the knees. And find a few up and down reverse tables. So be aware of your wrists though. Maybe give them a little bit of a stretch first. And what this looks like is a up, inhale, and down, exhale. Just a few times. Three more. It's intense on the shoulders too, so just be mindful. Keep your elbows bent and go up only to your degree. Good job. Squeeze your glutes. Last time. Hold for three, two, one. Release your hips down. Walk your feet forward a little bit. Keep the heels really, really active and find that boat pose. Just balancing on your sacrum. Engage the pelvic floor. Relax your shoulders. Again, zip, like find that kind of <laughs> zip. As if you had a zipper and it was like going from the bottom of your feet all the way up, zipping everything in towards the midline. Find that connection, that hugging inwards. Relax your shoulders. You can stay here. This is plenty. If you really want more, you can kind of bring the knees higher. And this, if this is still not enough, you might extend the legs and drop them down and shift back. Really balancing on that sacrum. 
for five, four, three, two, one. Good job. Cross your legs into easy sitting pose. Rock side to side a couple of times. Open your heart. Maybe even interlace hands behind the back. And then from here, we'll bow forward. Adjust your feet so that they're at a place where they're comfortable for your hips when you bow. This should feel delicious. If it doesn't feel delicious, then adjust the placement of your feet even more. There's no specific spot. Maybe even walk your hands over to the front and then to the right. So take a quick look. I'm basically taking that opposite arm, drawing it forward and then almost like twisting to one side and then to the other. And then coming back into a forward fold, maybe just relaxing there for a couple of breaths before switching legs. If your right leg is forward, you take your left leg forward. This should feel really good on the outer hips. And you might have felt more sensation on one side than the other. Hinge from your hips versus, versus curling through your spine. From here, becoming aware of your hips and which version of pigeon you'd like to take. So some of us will take a double pigeon, some of us will take a prone pigeon. I love that most of you are taking your time adjusting into the posture, setting up from a perspective of stacking the joints, setting up from a perspective of caring for the body, and not going too fast, too deep, regaining access to that slow magnetic resonance of the earth. And slowing down the breath enough to really attuning into it. So we have evolved as a species, we have evolved to meet certain challenges that have forced us to come out of sync with the resonance of the earth. And it's a very subtle thing, the mind, the logical mind doesn't get this, but it's a Going in, finding your heart, softening the chest, softening the belly. Finding that letting go, that surrender down to the ground, slowing down the breath.
It's like coming home down to the ground, slow. And we'll slowly start to transition to the other side. I'll have you listen to your body to make any motions in between that feel lovely to you. Don't move away so fast from this impeccable silence. Come back to it. Feel the palpable presence, a living presence. really going anywhere. It's more of a journey into presence. That if we are graced with the understanding, we can find that inner peace. Slowly make your way out of the pose, eventually arriving onto your backs. And as you arrive onto your back, if it feels good to you to take like this heart opener into a bridge or it feels good to just take some twisting motions on your back or a happy baby pose. Follow your instinct. Now leverage and resource the light as well as the earth.
resource, this space. And begin to cultivate spaciousness. Inside and outside. And the way we do this is to step out of thinking and just drop into the body in a way that begins to feel like the outer layer of the body is merging with the atmosphere. Once again, this requires a softening. Finding a deep sense of rest and cultivating that deep sense of rest so that we feel it in the midst of the storm, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of stress. Take a deep in breath. Let it go. And decide if you want to remain reclined for the close of practice. Or if you'd rather roll over onto your side for a few moments before coming up to seated. Closing the practice together by uniting the hands at heart space, rubbing them for a couple of moments before planting them on the heart. Finding the deep uh, sense of gratitude 
for anything that comes to mind. For me, I am grateful to be together today. And whether you're here physically or with us remotely, we're together. Not alone. Never alone. And we close the practice with the sound of Om, a cleansing breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Thank you for allowing me to teach you today. The big heart, universal heart, within me acknowledges and bows to the universal heart within you. Namaste. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone.